Good evening, all. I am very much happy to be in this August occasion with all, and that too for a lecture of Mr. N. Natarajan, who is fondly remembered as N. N. You all know N. N. was the doyen of the criminal bar, and he was a first generation lawyer. He came from a village in uh, Kanakampati in uh, Palani, and from there he started his journey. He studied in the ordinary board school, and you could have every anybody who had heard him, watched him argue, never will say that he is from a big convent or a big college, uh, or uh, from. Uh, but he was very. He started that way, but he acquired, he developed, and thereafter, he presented in such a way and conducted himself in such a way. He looked like an aristocrat, and the language was excellent, because. not everybody has that opportunity not everybody is gifted with it it has been a developed quality that is what i request all the youngsters first generation lawyers to develop such quality and raise to the occasion i recollect in the year of his 60th of his uh, bar, 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 i mean bar experience he had we had a get together at that time he re recollected his early days and he info I mean, he was telling he said that do you all believe me that i started my car career in the criminal said i used to stand in the egmor court you all know the old egmor court with a pad with a green sheet in my hand to write the petition see the nowadays everybody gets the printed format i used to write in my own hand and i used to present that was the way i started his life that is that is what is that is the way he started so from that level to reaching the advocate general special prosecutor for cbi case bomb blocks case bombay bomb blocks case and whatever you remind whatever you name it he had he had a bungalow in chennai everything was in the right way of profession he had a bungalow in chennai beach house in uttangudi uttangudi and uh, um, uh, a bungalow in kodaikanal a delhi bar flat it is all of his hard work and whatever he earned in the profession so you start the profession in the right way do it sincerely attend it sincerely nothing is not reachable everything is possible Mr. He, you all know he had started his career with uh, Judge Mr. I mean, Senior Mohan Kumar Mangalam, and thereafter he has been there. Um, my senior, you all know, Mr. K. Ashokan is one of his juniors, and we all live as a family. We all call us as N N family, and you all know the. his legacy of nn more than 200 to 250 juniors he has from him from his staple have come out and i think very few would have the rare i mean this credit of having almost five or six senior five senior councils mr m ravindran who was <coughs> additional solicitor general my senior k ashokan r shanmu sundaram the present ag n r ilango kumareshan uh, additional ag and uh, mr arvind dattar was with ramani natarajan associated with narayan ramani natarajan this was the kind of advocates he could prop up and crop up and make them reach this level and most of the cases you could have seen all are first generation lawyers he was very particular in developing giving opportunity training the first generation lawyers and first generation lawyers reaching such height and being successful in the profession is the hallmark of that gentleman mr n n sir <laughs> mr n n was one of the best criminal lawyers in the country during his time criminal lawyers the criminal lawyers of caliber of mr n t vanamamalai rangwajalu punjab kesan who joined the trial carving a niche for themselves in chennai and in tamil nadu little persons whom i know it was mr vrudachal vrediyar s narsimhan of selam selam parthasarathi mr ramachandran from coimbatore uh, dlr from chengalpet uh, vellur mr varadarajan and mr one kalyana mr kalyana sundaram from nagapatnam these were the big lawyers criminal lawyers trial lawyers who had achieved and outshined during their period mr 
Ennen was origin as an is an original thinker, had a unique approach in a given case. His approach was always to study human conduct and present the case based on human conduct. He had a direct approach to elicit the truth instead of fencing around the block to block the witness. His approach to a case was to see whether theory propounded by police would establish the guilt of the accused when any advocate engages him. The initial study was whether the case involves circumstantial evidence or is there any direct evidence. Thereafter, the study of the case related to how the chain was linked by the police to prove the guilt of the accused. Since he was an original thinker, he would often rethink and would never shy away from admitting that what he believed earlier was wrong and thereafter taking the opposite view. He was always a thinker, always on his foot, depending upon the situation, depending upon the circumstances, depending upon how the witness answers and how things goes on, he will frame his questions and get the answers what is required. While conducting a case, a lot of energy and thought was spent on studying the judge. He was also a good reader of the judge because that is very much required for us as an advocate. And he would figure out what was on the judge's mind so that the, the doubt would be addressed almost immediately. And whenever he was going back from the court after finishing, you would normally take two or three, the juniors will accompany him. And he would ask the juniors, what was the judge's reaction to this question? What was the judge's face reading? Those things, because to understand in what way the judge is thinking on that, so that in the future, he can, he can, I mean, the, immediately thereafter, he can correct himself or impress the judge on the way he thinks on the line. This, this was the interactions he was having. And he normally gives, I mean, assigns a case to three, three, junior, three of juniors. Likewise, he'll do a compartmentalize and give and discuss with them threadbare. And when the trial is going on, he would say that your eyes is not only with the witness, your eyes when you are in a trial court, your eyes as a trial lawyer should be throughout on all the sides. You have to look on all the directions, find, find out what is the small changes going on, what is the reaction, and, that, and you have to proceed. But this is the training he used to give. And whenever a good point is appreciated by the judge, he will not hesitate to say that this must go to my junior. He was the person who has given me the, this point for me to argue. That was his greatness of that man. And likewise, he was also harsh with the juniors when they don't do the work. That is for the purpose of them to change themselves, understand their situation. And in his office, it was, you could see that in his office there is no cubicles. There will be a long table and a bench. And that to show that all juniors are one, no senior junior, amongst the juniors, all seniors are one, sit there across, nothing, nothing, nothing secrecy. Everybody will know what the other man is preparing. Everybody will exchange because a lot of thought process has to go on on the criminal side. Thought process, so he would make that, that is the way. It, and never he had introduced, I mean, when you introduce anybody, he will never introduce, he's my junior. He will only say, he's my colleague. That was his greatness. He would say, he's my colleague. That is the way you introduce us. And in criminal, criminal side, you know, there was not much respectability earlier. And, and, that, and we were not, on the criminal side, we were not open to the finer sides of the life. He was the person who would host parties, get-togethers, and it will be juniors separately, and also with the families, and that will be a regular phenomenon. And he would take us to the, he was a member of all the clubs, he would take us to take us to the clubs, make us feel that one among them, nobody, we are not less, we are not a less model than the other, uh, because normally it will be the constitutional lawyers, civil lawyers who will be there adorning the clubs and higher places. He will take us, make us feel that we are, we are no way less to them. We can also have, we can also see the other side of it. It is not that we are running around only magistrate court and appearing in sessions court. You don't stop, you elevate to yourself to that level. That was his fineness of him. He would take us to all the places. Take us in the sense it will not be only Ennens Junior. He will see that his junior's junior. Likewise, only we are not, because I, I was only Ashokan's junior. We were taken out to the parties and all his get-togethers because he would call all the junior's juniors to come. 
and that was the way and he will interact with us take us to that and he will see that when top on the top notches of the industry or on the city will be there in the club he will say that let him be there man let you you carry on with us things we will make you will make it very easy and you will also elevate your thought process your mind and your level of living in the society that was the greatness of he gave to the criminal lawyers that was what we felt because that was the way we we, we we said we are no less mortal to anybody that way he gave respectively to the civil, uh, criminal lawyers and uh, furthermore <coughs> you all know that he was very strong in uh, evidence act and uh, he was he was an ex he was strong in evidence act as well as the all the special i mean arms act may it be arms act medical evidence handwriting and all the expert he was very ex very 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 well thorough well prepared thorough he would read lot of books he was a voracious leader reader and he would put the expert in shame by cross examination and breaking the case that was his specialty of him you know that when he was engaged in the rajiv gandhi case we all know when the rajiv gandhi case when he was engaged he had appeared before the supreme court and said that it is only 30 days more for it is only 30 days short time has been given i have to read around 8000 pages of translated evidences and 2000 page of the judgment and within one month it is not possible for me for us to do justice he asked time supreme court was very stern because you know the sensational and the importance of the case supreme court was very stern and they said no you have to do it then he took up the case he argued 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 the opening mark what he made opening mark what he made is that he would say that rajiv gandhi you know that rajiv gandhi it's a bomb blast case killing 41 people and uh, for rajiv gandhi as well as 41 people including the common man but he he opened the case and said that in this case tada will not get attracted it is not a case of extremist everybody was actually laughing at him and there was barrage of questions put to him but his answer was that he said that the aim of the assailant was only rajiv gandhi and not others if it's the aim was to kill everybody the impact and the explosion would have been different they were only aiming one person and in the process others have got done so it was not a case of terrorist activities which ultimately they agreed and they accused in the as far as tada case they were acquitted in the appeal before the supreme court that paved the way gave the way for the freedom now the accused in the case are enjoying but for that otherwise that would have been a block and they could not have never come out of the prison so the foundation was laid laid laid, laid by him yes that that was also there and uh, they said that um, uh, mr in fact uh, mr one second i also made a note of it he they gave encomi and mr wadwa one second Uh, justice Wadwa observed in the judgment, like this, a heavy burden lay on shoulders of N. Natarajan. He carried with aplomb his presentation of the case, showed his complete mastery mastery of facts and law. It was a pleasure to hear him, not losing his poise even for once. He was fair in his submission, conceding where it was unnecessary to contest. That was the incoming which was given by Justice Wadwa in the judgment, and. That, that 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 is that was the way of his arguments you also we also know about the bombay blast case he was the chief prosecutor we all i think everybody should be aware of it there was one petitioner monger a busy body making allegation complaint against mr n natarajan because mr n natarajan had initially filed the charge sheet at that time he was arguing that section 121 120a has to be included and charges to be framed against the accused and that was the initial argument and you know that it was a long case and lot of accused it took months eight months took for framing the charges 
And then when the, when the final framing of charges came, he said that I am giving up 121 and 121A with regard to the others because I don't have evidence with regard to the other offences. Let us proceed. At that time, the busy body man, one B.K. Subarao, he who had also uh, he had filed a petition under Section 340, stating that he had he had caused perjury by filing such petition. Initially, he took one stand, and thereafter he is take, he giving back, taking up another stand. And he filed a three, three, uh, petition under Section 340. The trial court had also taken it on file. Tara court then thereafter issued a notice to him. Thereafter, it was taken up to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court, in the case of N. Natarajan v. B. K. Subarao, 2003, 2 SCC 76. Thereafter, they took up and considering all the submissions in that, they have observed. By no stretch of in, in paragraph 10, I am reading. You read it will be in short, short judgment. It's interesting. By no stretch of imagination can we say that the stand of a council, however inconsistent it may be, at the different stages of the proceedings can amount to offence advert to under section 195 CRPC. If the court begins to issue notice for prosecution or as to why inquiry should not be made in the matter or to launch a prosecution. No advocate can function with safety, nor can he assist the court with the necessary fearless which is required of him. So that was the thing, and they said that advocate, ad, either it's going to be defense advocate or the prosecution, they are at will to concede the case or change the attitude which cannot be faulted with. That was, and that was the greatness of that man. And Supreme, it was argued on behalf of NN, it was uh, argued by former uh, Attorney General, the K.K. Venugopal. K.K. Venugopal, NN, G. Ramswamy were all close friends in their initial stages of their practice in Madras High Court. They used to go for hiking and other things. That is other part of it. But still, Supreme Court took all this into consideration and gave that. So uh, not only as a defense lawyer, even as a prosecutor, he made that a position a respectable one and gave them the authority to have the case in the way which a prosecutor has to conduct, depending upon the case, and he is the master of the case, and not to be cowed down by the other external factors. That was the greatness of NN. And with regard to his approach and other, other things, I have already informed. And, and Mr. So NN sir would always insist on presenting the case in the simplest manner possible as the objective was always to convince the judge in simple terms. He would insist that no one, one should not show off his vocabulary skill or knowledge when addressing the court. Likewise, he would say that once a judge is, once a judge is agreed on one point, you should leave it as it at that stage. You should not try to show off that I have read more and want to address more and ultimately you will lose the case. So you try to understand, study the judge. If he is convincing, if he is convinced with that point, thereafter keep quiet. That is all. And, uh, and likewise, whatever you read and whatever your skill, you don't try to show off there. Your case is to present it, convince the judge and come off. That is all. And not more than that. That was his way of practice and addressing the court. And he would also suggest to us that is his juniors, whenever time permits, whenever you take a criminal case, visit the scene of occurrence. Visiting the scene of occurrence is a must in a criminal case so that you can understand the topography. Not only in murder case, even in trap case or any other case, you go to the scene of occurrence, you, you have the, I mean, um, uh, visit the place, you visualize and get it into your mind. It will be easy for, uh, for you to understand and put forth the cross-examination. At that time, if you just a small small spark might turn the witness because you know the topography of the area, you question him on certain aspects of that place, and where uh, he, he tries to gloss over or I mean wants to cover up certain points, at that point this visiting the scene of occurrence would be very useful to you. And once the witness feels that he has been caught on the wrong foot, then thereafter he'll start making whatever uh, answer you expect to give. So that breaking of ice 
you need to have the visiting of scene a scene of occurrence would be an important factor and uh, marshal the facts thoroughly that was the advice he used to give facts you must be very thorough and each time you come uh, come up of a case you take the bar act you take the law read again and again because as you prepare for one case and take the law and read in that perception you will be looking at the law so each time you will be looking at the law the same law but for a different case for a different facts in your perception may change for depending upon your understanding of the case so each time you take a facts marshal your facts then go to the law and each time it might give so each time you should not fail to read the law and all the tri criminal lawyers trial lawyers you must have a handbook on you with you which is of crpc evidence and ipc handbook it is a must it has to be there a pocket note has to be there to ma make uh, to <coughs> note the other uh, seniors or somebody is arguing giving a point or referring to a citation these were the fundamentals which he was teaching us and this was on the professional side on his personal side he was a great hiker he was a hunter and used he is a tennis player is a golf player and what else what not he, he and he also knows to chill himself everything was with his juniors and friends and juniors were all treated as family members and he had craze for the cars used to buy cars whenever new model comes and he will not use the cars for more than 3 years or so and the third year it will be given to one junior but at the market rate so that 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 uh, privilege you have. and one more is that you also have the privilege of having the my senior car or nn car so that was the way he used to do he had properties in that uh, beach house at utandi and as well as the kodakanal house he had that extra space after he constructed the building he had some extra space those place pay, places and all were given to his juniors only at the market price not at the market price what he bought after years that was his generosity bigness of him and uh, he, he had done only good to the juniors and uh, more than 200 to 250 persons have been trained under him and i could say that the success rate of the youngsters or the juniors from him are all been almost 100% except for one or few who are gone for few would have gone for some employment or would have left for other purposes who were were in the profession or from the from his office had all succeeded were all made maybe they were not achieved to the level to be recognized by everybody but sustaining themselves for what we came to the profession to that level he had done it that we all should appreciate and finally i wind up by saying that portals of both the trial courts in india and superior courts would hardly see a person of his caliber who dominated criminal law both at trial stage and in appeal and we all know that dialing 100 is an emergency number for anybody to approach police for any distress likewise 100 law chambers is the place when a person life and liberty is to be secured and saved we have to run there thank you all